Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer question number 14 from the June 2016 C12 paper. This question here is kind of like graphs, functions, and transformations, and a bit of um, algebra, simultaneous equations, a bit of a mixture. Now, I'm choosing this question. This is related to P1. Uh, topic or P1, uh, the new P1 service. So I'm choosing this question from these old papers, all right, to make them relevant to what we're taking now in the new syllabus. So this is something that is uh, would be under under P1. Now, here we have a strange looking graph. Okay, it says figure four shows a sketch of graph of y equals g of x between minus three and four, between minus three up to four and x. Okay, and part of the line L with the equation y equals a half of x. This is line L, y equals a half of x. Okay, this equation line L is y equals a half x. Okay, the graph y equals gx consists of three line segments. Consists of three line segments from P to Q. All right, so from P to Q, it's like a horizontal line. And from Q to R, it's like a slanted line which has a negative gradient. And then from R to S, which is like a line which has a positive gradient. So this is called a piecewise function. It changes for different range, uh, values of the domain of X. Okay, it changes. It's a bit of a weird function. All right, now, it says the line L intersects Y equals GX at the points A and B as shown in figure four. Use algebra to find the X coordinates of the point A and the X coordinate of the point B. So we've got to find the x coordinate of these two points where this line y equals a half of x meets this curve y equals g of x. Now, we've got to think about, in this case, um, the points at which they do intersect. Now, this intersects, A is at that point over there, where the line intersects this section between Q and R. So what we've got to do is to find the value of this point where they intersect, we need to find what the equation of Q, the line QR is. Okay, so we need... The equation of QR. We need the equation of the line QR. Okay, now we need to find the gradient of QR. That's one thing we need to find. All right, the gradient of QR. Um, now, the gradient of a line is the change of the um, Y over the change in the X. So it's going to be 4 minus 0 over 0 minus 2. So 4 minus 0 over 0 minus 2, which is going to be 4 over minus 2, which is negative 2. So that's a that's the gradient of the line QR. So that's the gradient of QR. Okay, negative 2. And we know that this line passes through the point 0, 4. Okay, so we can say the y-intercept is equal to 4 because it passes through the point 0, 4. So we can straight away say the equation of the line QR, the equation of QR is y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. All right, and we want to see that's for that, so that, that's going to help us to find the point A. So we need to see where they intersect. So I need to see where y equals a half x and y equals a negative 2x plus 4 intersect. Well, that's pretty easy. I can substitute instead of y a half x. So I have a half x equals minus 2x plus 4. All right, and if I want to get rid of the fraction, I can multiply both sides by 2. I have x equals minus 4x plus 8. 4x, sorry, minus 4x equals, um, so x equals minus 4x plus 8, multiply it by 2. And then I can add 4x to both sides, so I have 5x equals 8, so x equals 8 over 5. Okay, that's the value of this point, the x coordinate of a. Okay, we can say that, therefore, the, the x-coordinate of A is 8 over 5. Now we've got to find where, what the coordinates of point B are. Point B is over there. Okay, that's, that's point B over here now. Now, point B is where the same line, y equals a half x, meets this part of the line. So we need to find the equation between R and S. We need to find the equation between R and S. Okay, so we need to find the point B. So we need to find where this line y equals a half x intersects with the uh, the line here between R and S. So we need to find the gradient of R S, which is the change in y, which is 10 minus 0 
over the change in x, which is 4 minus 2. Okay, so that's going to give you 10 over 2, which is 5. Okay, so the gradient of this line is, is 5. And we got to find um, its equation. So what we can do is, um, we don't have the y-intercept showing here, so we can just use um, any point on the line. For example, I could use 2 and 0. And I can say y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 0 equals m, which is 5 times x minus 2. So you have y equals 5x minus 10. Okay, so that's the equation of the second line here, um, Rs. Okay, so this is, the, this is the equation. This is line Rs. Okay, so we're going to find what intersects with y equals equal to a half x. So we can put a half x is equal to 5x minus 10. Uh, if you want to get rid of the fraction again, we can say x equals 10x minus 20. So we'll have 20 is equal to 9x. So x equals 20 over 9. So that's the second coordinate of the x. That's the x coordinate of the point B. That's x coordinate of the point B. So there we have the answer to this question. And we found the two points A and B by finding the equation of this line, solving simultaneously with this line, finding the equation of that line, and solving simultaneously with that, that line. So there's, that's how you can deal with the first part of the question. Now, the next part of the question says, sketch the graph with the equation y equals 3 over 2 times g of x for x is between minus 3 and 4. On your sketch, show the coordinates of the points to which p, q, r, and s are transformed. Okay, so now... We need to look at the old graph. And now it says sketch the graph with the equation y equals 3 over 2 of gx for x between minus 3 and 4. On your sketch, show the coordinates of the points to which p, q, r, and s are transformed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write p. Now the coordinates of p are minus 3, 4 in the beginning. q, 0, 4. r, 2, 0. And s, 4, 4, 10. And I'm going to put the new coordinates of them. Okay, so this is these this is the, the new coordinates. So this is I call it P dash, the new coordinate of P. Okay, now what's happened here is the whole function is multiplied by 3 over 2. Okay, there's a difference between th g 3 over 2x and 3 over 2 gx. What's the difference between those two? Well, this only affects the y. Um, coordinate it doesn't affect the x coordinate. This is where you multiply the y coordinates by 3 over 2. 3 over 2 times the y coordinates. And the x coordinates are left alone. This would be, if it was this, where you take the x coordinates and multiply them by the reciprocal of this number. So that would be the, the x coordinates multiplied by 2 thirds. But that's not what it is. It's this, 3 over 2 gx. So I'm, I'm going to take the y coordinates. For first of all, the x coordinates will all be unchanged. So I can just write down all the x coordinates as they are without any change. So this is going to be minus 3, this will be 0, this is going to be 2, and this is going to be 4. Okay, what's going to change are the y coordinates. So the x coordinates are unchanged, the y coordinates are going to change. You're going to multiply them by 3 over 2. So you're going to have 3 over 2 times 4, which is going to be 6. Then you're going to, so you're going to take um, you know, the y coordinate and multiply by 3 over 2. So this is 4 times 3 over 2, which gives you 6. And this is, um, again, this is going to be 4 times 3 over 2, which is also going to give you 6. Here you're going to have 0 times 3 over 2, which is 0, so that won't change. Okay, 0 times 3 over 2 is going to be 0. And here you're going to have 10 times 3 over 2, well, that's going to be 5 times 3, 15. So those will be the new coordinates of the points P, Q, R, and S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pair of axes and make a sketch of this. Okay, make a sketch of this. So there's my X axis and there's my Y axis. Make it a bit more symmetrical. Okay, now, so I know that my new point P is, is minus 3 and 6. Okay, so I still have this as minus 3. So 
So it's going to be minus 3 and 6. Okay, this is the coordinate of P dash. Minus 3, 6. And you're going to have a line that's horizontal going to 6. Okay, and that's the point Q, which is 0, 6. Okay, and then you have um, R, which is 2, 0, didn't change. So you still got here 2, 2, 0, and that's going to be R. That's the point R, 2, 0. And then you're going to have um, the next point is going to be S, which is going to be 4 and 15. So you're still going to be at 4. Let me make this a bit more realistic. Okay, this is a closed circle, by the way. And then you're going to have 4 and 15. So make it a bit higher just to make it reflect it a bit more. Okay, so let's say 4 is over here and 15 is up here somewhere. So I'll just draw a straight line, 4, 15. Okay, the gradient of this is going to be 5, so it's a bit steeper than that one. Okay, so that's 15 up here. This is the point 4, 15, which is the point S. So PQRS, 4.15. Okay, this is 4 here. All right, so this is Y equals 3 over 2 of GX. Okay, so it says, on your sketch, show the coordinates of the points to which PQRS have been transformed. Okay, we've done that. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 14, part B, which concludes this question number 14, it's a bit of a strange thing because of the way this function looks, but it's absolutely fine. Okay, this is pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so um, other questions from this paper in June 2016, C12, I'll put in the playlist that you should find over here. Other questions from this topic of transformations of graphs and um, transformations of graphs, and I'll also put it under the equations Okay, because it's got some simultaneous equations in here. Um, and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.